In the second of our graphics series, we're going to explore uh, the use of blending, which gives us a way of combining a source image with a destination image. And we actually have quite a lot of control over how we can combine the two images together, and that opens up quite a wide range of different uh, visual effects. So we'll start off uh, talking about alpha compositing, which is, is the formal name uh, when we want to take two images and to combine them together into some defined output. The general form you can see in this uh, slide here. So we have a source image. That's the thing we want to draw. We have a destination image. That is where we are drawing it to. So, so there's a notion of we are drawing this source on onto some destination. Now that destination could be could be effectively a blank uh, single color region. It could be an existing region where we have different elements there. And the question of how we take the source and add this to the destination to get whatever form of output is the process known as compositing. The most common way of, of, of looking at this, I mean, effectively, it's a combinational problem. Uh, the most common way you can see down at the bottom. So it's a little bit of uh, an equation. Again, this is a computational process. It's going to be uh, quite often performed by the, the video card running some simple algorithm. So you know, effectively, it's a numerical combination. But the output color uh, that we have, we can view it as comprising the source color multiplied by some blend function. So multiplied by some number. And then we're adding onto that the destination color. And it is multiplied by some destination blend function. So effectively, it's taking a source color. And, and quite often, these we're thinking about numbers in the range from 0 to 1. Um, so or, you know, if it's 200, it'd be 0 to 255. But we quite often map it onto the 0 to 1 range. Uh, so a bright, bright red would have a value of 1. No red at all, I'm talking about the red channel, would have a value of 0. If it's the alpha channel, a value of 1 means that it is fully visible. A value of 0 means that it is completely invisible. There's no contribution. Um, so the source color, we view that as a number. We multiply that by some other number, again coming from a function, and we add on to that the destination color as a number multiplied by some other function. This gives us a number, and again, we're then interpreting that as the color based on whatever value it contributes to the, the red, the green, the blue, the alpha channels. So it sounds uh, maybe more complex than it, that it is, but we'll see a few examples. There's an awful lot of flexibility here, though the reality is there's only a few common forms that uh, most people end up using. So you can see a list of different blend functions on this slide. So we'll go through a few of them. So zero is at the top. In this case, each component of the color is multiplied by zero. So it doesn't matter what our red channel value is, we're multiplying it by zero, which means it will always have a zero output. So if we were to use a zero blend function, effectively we're saying, it doesn't matter if it's the source of the destination, if we're multiplying it by zero, we will have zero at the end. So this is a way of, of discounting, of removing uh, that element of it. One's underneath it. Uh, so in the case of one, we're multiplying the channel value by one itself. In other words, it's unchanged. So this, if our blend function is one, what we're basically saying is we want to take the source of the destination and use them unmodified, depending on what we are multiplying the one against. We have source color, we have source alpha. So source alpha is one of the more common ones. Uh, in this case, you read the description, each component of the color is multiplied by the alpha value of the source. So here we might have a red channel, but what we are multiplying the red channel value by is whatever the corresponding alpha channel value is. So there that involves looking at the alpha channel, taking the value from that and using that to multiply the, uh, for example, the red, the green and the blue channels. Now, you can see over on the left hand side, inverse functions are also defined. So we have inverse source alpha, inverse inverse source color and so on. Generally, you don't have inverse zero. If you did inverse of zero is one, and inverse of one is, is zero. So the way of thinking of the inverse function, it is one minus the normal function. Uh, so for the source alpha, if we had an alpha value of 0 0.2, 
and our blend function was source alpha, we'd be multiplying it by 0.2. If we were using inverse source alpha as our blend function, then we'd be multiplying it by 1 minus 0.2, so 0.8. Okay, so again, reasonably complex. Let's look at uh, how these things actually get to be used to provide uh, some common blends. So there's two ones that we want to have a look at because they're the ones that are commonly used uh, and actually are quite useful uh, within uh, our 2D games. Uh, the first one is normal blending or just normal alpha blending. So when people talk about alpha blending, very often this is what they have in mind. And the second one is known as additive blending. So we'll look at how we can use our source uh, blend functions with the source and the destination images to achieve these different effects. Normal alpha blending, when we think about this here, basically takes a transparent or translucent image and combines it with whatever's behind it so that we, we, we get to see through it, so we get to, to show what's underneath it, taking into account the alpha value. So a value of one means that we're completely hiding the background, a value of zero means we're completely showing the background. A value of 0.5 means we're seeing half of the background and half of the image. So that's what we mean by normal alpha blending. Additive blending, in this case, it, as the name suggests, we are adding something to the background. Uh, so we are taking our background image and we are adding to that another image. And it has the, depending on what you add, generally speaking, it has the visual effect of brightening the image. Now that, that, that's, I suppose, the, the, the most likely, or the most common reason why you'd use additive blending is to brighten up a region of the image. Okay, so let's look at both of these. We'll start off looking at uh, traditional alpha blending. Uh, so in terms of the image here from Minecraft, the, the blocks, uh, sort of the, the middle left of the screen so again there you can see we're seeing behind those we get to see a bit of the block we get to see a bit of the background so this is what our normal alpha blending uh, will achieve how do we do it the equation actually is shown at the top so the color the output color is equal to the source color times source alpha plus the destination color times inverse source alpha so we're going to think a little bit about this just in terms of what it does. Uh, to do that, you, you can see we've got an image here where we have our background image. This is our, 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 our destination. And we have our source one. In fact, we have two source ones here, a uh, um, uh, health bar at the top and then the, uh, the figure of the, uh, the, the player. So the player's figure is three boxes by uh, five boxes wide. And we want to take that and to combine it with the destination image behind it. Um, we can assume in this case here that the source image will have some regions which will be fully visible and some regions which will have a zero alpha value. So we want them to be completely invisible, we just want to see straight through to the, the background. So why does that equation that we have at the top work? We've got a table down here that illustrates how it works. And we've got three values for our source alpha, a value of 1, 0, and 0.5. Now, you'll notice the equation we have at the top is in terms of source alpha and inverse source alpha. There's no mention here of any destination alpha. So where how we combine it depends solely upon the source alpha value um, in, in the source image that we are using. Now, if it is a value of, not, of, of 1, so our source alpha of 1, that means that we only want to retain the source color. We want that to be 100% of what is visible, and we want 0% of the destination one. So let's think about this here. So the color is equal to source color times source alpha. So source alpha would be 1. So there we are fully retaining the source color. That's good. And we're adding on to that the destination color times inverse source alpha. So remember we said that the inverse of a blend function is 1 minus it. So if source alpha is 1, 1 minus that is 1 minus 1, which is 0. So in this case, the destination color gets to be multiplied by 0. In other words, it gets to be entirely removed. So that works for a source alpha value of 1. We keep 100% of our source, 0% of our destination, and what we end up with is just the source uh, image. If we have an alpha value of 0, and uh, by design, what we're trying to achieve here is we don't want to have any of the source and we want to keep all of the destination. 
So in this case, source alpha is zero. So the source color gets multiplied by zero. It gets to be completely removed. Inverse source alpha, so one minus zero is one. So in that case, it's destination color times one. In other words, we get to retain all of the destination color. And our output then is simply destination, what, what was there to begin with. If we have an alpha value of 0 0.5, this equates to saying that we want to have half of the source and half of the destination. So in this case, again, source value is source times 0 0.5, we'll half it. And 1 minus 0 0.5, which again is 0 0.5, again, we'll half that. Output then is the source plus the destination times a half. So it is the average uh, between the, the two. So that hangs together. Using that simple uh, equation, we are able to achieve normal alpha blending and we can take and make use of our alpha channel to control how and which parts of our source image are visible or invisible uh, and, and blend it with the destination. Little aside, so if we are using normal alpha blending, it is essential uh, normally that we draw things in the right order. So there's a small example that it may or may or not be easy to see depending on the screen you're looking at. So down at the bottom where we have a, a yellow and a bluey square. Um, the example on the, uh, the left hand side, we've got the yellow square above the blue side and behind it on the right hand side. And if you look at the, the two colors of the two blends, you can see they're actually slightly different. So if we're using normal alpha blending and we're combining multiple images, the order in which we blend it actually matters. If we blend it in a different order, it will change the color. Uh, so this means that if we're using alpha blending, and Mom certainly will be within our games, we have to think and to make sure we are drawing things in the right order. So the example you can see here, we could have a, a background layer with different elements. We want to draw that first. We could have then a foreground layer or layers in front of that where we're adding in using alpha blending different objects. We need to make sure we draw those after it. And if there's any um, HUD elements, again, we want them to be displayed on top. We'll add those ones in as well. So it's important, alpha blending, make sure we draw things in the right sequence. Additive blending is the other one we wanted to have and explore off. And you can see the equation for it here is actually quite a simple equation. So if we're using uh, additive blending, it's the source color times source alpha. So this is the, the same top bit as we have for normal alpha blending. So, so effectively, if our source alpha is zero, we're containing 0%. If it's one, we're retaining 100% of it. But source color times source alpha plus destination color times one. So we are retaining all of the destination color. We're not changing it. And we're simply adding to this the source color times the source alpha. So it adds the thing on to it. Uh, it's commutative in the sense that it doesn't matter which order you do it because it's an additive process. You can have any number of images combined using additive blending, any old sequence of doing them, and you'll get the same um, output out in terms of the answer. So if you're using additive blending, generally you can add these things together in any order at all. Now, sometimes and quite often in our game, we will want to use additive and alpha blending. Anytime alpha is included in it, we have to be worried about the draw order. So there are certain elements then that we would want to make sure we have drawn additively, either before or after certain components of the normal alpha blend. Now, additive blending, you might be sitting thinking about what's the benefit of this? Why would we do this? In fact, actually, it makes it things a little bit difficult. Quite often it's easy to imagine in your head what normal alpha blending will do if you take sort of 50% of this and draw it on top of the background. For additive blending, it's more complicated. So you see an example down at the bottom where we have sort of a bluish color and we have a brownish color. Additively, we'll be taking the two red channel components, adding them together, the two green channel components, adding them together, the two blue channel components, adding them together. And what we end up with, we will interpret as a color, in this case, or a kind of a lilac -y color. Um, it may not be obviously apparent what color it, it will be. General rule of thumb, the more things you add together through additive blending, you are straying towards a pure white color. Uh, that, that's generally speaking the destination you'll end up with. It brightens it, it turns it into pure white. 
So why are we using additive blending? There'll be two key reasons that we will do it. Uh, one will be for particle effects. So you can see two examples here. And the explosion that we have in the middle, the explosion actually will be one or a small number of simple particle images, single images, that we are drawing multiple times, different sizes, different rotations, and additively combining them together. So there you get a nice sort of bright glow in the middle, and as things move apart, it will, it will fade out. So for particle effects, uh, for certain particle effects, additive blending is going to be a core component of it. The other example, you see this, uh, the screenshot on the right, is that you can use it as a cheap form of lighting. So there we might have a, a dark um, screen, or we're drawing it to, to darken it down, depending on how we blended it out. And on top of that, we are drawing sort of triangular shaped light wedges that because we are adding to it, we can brighten up those areas of the image. And it gives us a way of, of it's a cheap way, but of, of sort of simulating lighting effects within um, within games. It's fairly crude. There, there are issues with bleed and things like that. Um, so it's, it's not a full lighting system. There are more sophisticated ways of, of actually managing this. So key takeaways from this one, fairly straightforward. Alpha compositing involves drawing a source image on top of a background image. So that's what, we, um, what we're talking about. There's lots of flexibility with how we do it. Normal alpha blending. So when we talk about alpha blending, normal alpha blending, it gives us a way of, of taking a transparent, translucent image and combining it with a background. And additive blending, we can use that for things like particle effects, for simple lighting effects. Uh, next one in this series, part three, we'll, we'll go on, I believe, to, to look at fonts and some of the elements about how uh, we can draw those.